Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today I'm going to show you how you can use the Compare tab in Moby Flight. Just keep in mind that these are the values that the simulator is getting, the FSUIPC value, and the output value is the value that you're making the, the servo say, or the light, the stepper motor, or seven segment display. Inside of MobiFlight, you'll notice that there is a compare tab. It's often quite confusing for beginners, so today I'm gonna show you all about it. The compare tab has two features, the comparison settings and the interpolation settings. The basic thing you need to understand is that a lot of this has to do with equations. The simplest equation dealing with MobiFlight is y equals x as it's written in algebra or just dollar sign. So the basically just think of the dollar sign as an x and it'll be and your life will be a lot easier. This is just an equation right here and we can even make our own equation uh, whatever we want it to be. So you could do something like 2x plus 7 or something and then it go up 7 and then it go it move twice as fast basically uh, but always remember that the X is actually a dollar sign of course it doesn't make sense to the graphing calculator so I'm representing them all as algebra equations so you can do anything you want to to the plane transformation if you want to you can make it negative you could have it start up above you could also have it uh, do something crazy. Uh, there are a lot of things. In fact, I'll link a page to what you can do with these equations in the link below. Probably the most practical example you'll use with this is if you just need to uh, have a value multiply by something. A lot of the FSUIPC offsets aren't 100% one-to-one, -one, so you'll need to multiply them by a number. Uh, so. I believe some of them are like, you have to multiply them by 2.33, but the FSUIPC offset list will show you all of the numbers you have to multiply them by. That is your basic transformation. Another cool thing with the transformation is that underneath it, you can actually link it kind of to other things. So I'll just show it in this. We'll pretend you have another transformation written as G. So we'll pretend you could set it equal to something else. Um, and then once the other transformation, once the other value moves, uh, so will your graph. So I think the only time I've had to use this was with RPM. You'd have to find a certain engine value and then that would move along with the RPM to get the RPM. It was a little confusing, but I believe I explained it or at least roughly in the RPM video. Uh, again, the link to that is in the description as well. You can see that as the values move, it makes the graph move. The next thing you'll deal with are comparisons. Comparisons are basically a piecewise function. Uh, if you're in algebra, I believe too. Uh, so you'll deal with those. Basically, the graph does something over this uh, domain and then it does something completely different over this domain so I'll just show you what I mean right here uh, so right here this graph is just being y equals x when it's uh, from 0 to 50 then once it gets up to 50 it actually does the equation 0.25 x squared minus 575. So this is just combining two equations over a certain uh, domain. This equation comes in really handy when you have something that looks like this. It goes from 135 all the way up to, let's say, 50, and then it drops down, way down to negative 34-ish. Then it goes all the way up to negative 35. So, what you're seeing right here 
is a comparison. The comparison values come in really handy if you have a value that is adjusted because they didn't want to have a negative value, so it's kind of staggered like this. If you were given a graph like this, and then you just went uh, plus 135, that wouldn't fix this part. It would just shift the entire graph up 135. So it really wouldn't do anything. What this does is it basically fixes a certain part of the graph, uh, so you can just focus on that. This graph I'm using is in the link in the description below. You don't have to have an account to use it, uh, but I think it just might be helpful for anyone looking at comparison values, because it kind of helps to see it in picture format instead of just dealing with numbers. The practical example I've had is the vertical speed indicator. You can check out the vertical speed indicator video I did in the link in the description below. This used the interpolation value like this, and then you had to you had to basically go um, subtract 135 from part of it, and then add 135 to part of it, uh, just to get it into a straight line instead of a broken line, I guess. The last thing, and probably one of the more confusing things at first, is the interpolation values. The interpolation values are very confusing until you realize it's basically just a graph. So right here I have a graph that I basically put in my own points into. So an interpolation value, uh, you c basically, I like to say, choose your own adventure. Uh, the interpolation values, you choose where each individual point goes, and you can make your own graph. So right here, you'll see that it's not a perfectly straight line, but each little segment is. This is because they kind of interpolate the values. So the interpolation value, you basically tell it point A and point B, and it gets there in the straightest line possible. So right here, I told it point A to point B, and it's just cutting across. And then I told it again, this is point A, this is point B, and it's just going across. I guess this is point B and that's point C, but I don't know. And then you can no you'll can you notice right here, it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. In fact, right here, it actually goes backwards for a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you have an application that would be useful for, but I suppose it might be useful for if, uh, say you need to restart the instrument, so it goes uh, 0, 15, 30, and then maybe it has like, maybe it needs to restart to 0, 15, 30, I don't know. Uh, but you can do that if you ever need to. One of the things interpolation is really helpful for is just switching the values really quickly. You can tell it that 0 is actually 100. And then you can also tell it that 100 is actually 0. Without any transformations, this line would look like this line up here. You'll see. But then, once you apply the interpolation value, it'll say, oh, actually, we should do, we should do what they say. And it'll go from 100 to 0, instead of 0 to 100. You want to make sure that the top and bottom row are your minimums and maximums, because uh, that defines the graph. The interpolation doesn't really know kind of what to do over here um, and over here, so you should probably put your interpolation value minimum and maximum where it are. Unless you flip it, then it'd be maximum and minimum. The practical example in this would be the Cessna 172 airspeed indicator. The spaces are not linear. In fact, if you look at the airspeed indicator, you'll see that, in the newer ones especially, so you'll see that there's probably a good 15 degrees between 40 and 60, probably a good 20 degrees between 60 and 80, um, but then it looks like it's just a little bit less at 40 to 60, and it looks like the most is 100 to 120. 
In fact, I can even get a protractor. Da -da -da. Uh -huh. So it's 40 degrees in between 40 and 60, 35 degrees, 40, and then about 50 actually. Then over here it's back to 40, then 30-ish, 25, then finally about 25. So you'll see that these aren't exactly the same amount for each um, for each section, though I might not have measured correctly. So yeah, if the angles aren't the same, uh, you'll have to use interpolation values to m to basically adjust the instrument. Another example of this is the Boeing 737 flap indicator. You'll notice right here that the servo travels the same amount for flaps 1 as it does for flaps 40, and these do not go up in uh, the correct order, and they d they're they not even uniform. I don't really know why they did that. Um, yeah. Hmm. So you'll see right here, you can kind of calibrate the instrument to make sure that all of the points line up, and it's not just kind of going all over the place, which comes in handy. Interpolation values are very helpful for that. I hope this video helped you a little bit more in the compare tab in MobiFlight. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscare, subscribe, and make sure to check out some of my other videos because uh, you might find them helpful. I have a playlist up, up here uh, and some other videos around here. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantabulous day. I'll see you later. No, oh, that was cheesy.